Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know about y'all, but that track gets me excited. Ready to go. Ready to go chase victory. No, 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 not chase it. Hunt it down. Snatch his fucking head off and punt it down the field. That's what we do here on Victory Talk, man. Welcome to another episode. This is episode 93. Let's get it started. Okay. All right. You know what it is. You know what it is. It's another episode of that Victory Talk podcast. Episode 93. We're running up on a hundred. We want some of my face. We wanted to do something <laughs> special for the hundredth episode, man. I don't know what it's gonna be. I don't know what it's gonna be, man. But uh, yo, man, welcome to another episode of Victory Talk. All right, this is the only podcast that I'm aware of that talks about how you can build your money, muscle, and your mindset exclusively. It's on Tuesdays and 30, Thursdays, and it's almost always exactly 15 minutes late. <laughs> I'm going to try to fix that, though. One day, I'm going to start showing up at 7 once I get my fucking shit together, and, <laughs> and y'all going to be like, God damn, he's on time. You know saying? Y'all going to be late. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but you know what it is, man. We out here. Um, we got a lot of stuff to talk to talk about today. I got a lot of stuff I want to talk to you about today. Things that are really going to help you actually, uh, people saying the beat go crazy. I seen that y'all, you know what I'm saying? Y'all know I made the beats, right? I know I made the beats. I'm thinking about, thinking about, I'm thinking about y'all let me know in the comments. I'm thinking I made, I made all the beats on the podcast and a lot of the beats in like my old YouTube videos. I made all those beats. It wasn't until I had other people editing my videos and they started using like some royalty free shit, you know? fucking lazy <laughs> no because i was lazy because <laughs> i didn't want to keep making beats but i don't know i got excited so i'm thinking about i'm thinking about putting together an instrumental album like on spotify and shit but here's the key it'll be music you put on to work hard because <laughs> that's something i do i'll put on instrumental music <laughs> when i'm working because like voices distracted me I started listening to the content and rapping along and shit. You know what I'm saying? I'll be fucking singing along. I'm in love with the shape of you. <laughs> I started saying, fuck that shit. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> fuck that shit. I want to focus. So I put on like instrumental beats, like fucking, I type in fucking Drake type beat or J. Cole type beat on, it's on YouTube, find a playlist and get to work. I'm thinking about coming out on my own playlist like that just for y'all. Y'all can stream it on whatever streaming platform. Y'all let me know that something y'all want. You know what I'm saying? Or maybe I should just drop the mixtape. I should just fucking drop a mixtape, Nima. Midlife crisis mixtape. You know what I'm saying? I'm 41 years old, man. Time to drop. Trying to trying to put the. If I really want to get this midlife crisis shit popping, <laughs> like on the next level, then I drop a rap album. <laughs> that's that's what I really do. You know what I'm saying? But I don't know if we there yet. <laughs> I mean, everyone in the comments is asking, like, uh, they want you to drop. <laughs> and when they want to drop the, the album, mixtape. first let's uh, the, the yeah. instrumental album. Yeah, yeah, the instrumental album. All right, we'll see, man. We'll see, man. I might, I might have to go ahead and do that. We already got a bunch of tracks. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> but then, but then, if that does well, then maybe I have to drop the instrumental mixtape. <laughs> I mean, I have to drop the actual fucking midlife crisis mixtape. I'm gonna come out with a new rap name. I'm thinking. I'm thinking. This is. Just, Tell me what you think. New rap name. Oral B. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Oral B. I'm in your mouth twice. I'm in that mouth twice a day. You feel me? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Let me know what you think. What you think? Some people are asking, is this live? Listen, man, it is 720. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Eastern Standard Time. Damn, we look fucking late. 720 Eastern Standard Time. You know what I'm saying? In Miami. If you think this is fucking pre-recorded, man, you got me all the way fucked up. I have never lied to y'all 
And the reason why I never lied to y'all, because one, I don't need to. My shit is always dope. And also, if I was to lie, that would mean that I value your fucking opinion, <laughs> right? I'm not here to impress you. I'm here to fucking teach you. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm already impressive and nothing you can say can make me feel better about myself. I'm already an arrogant motherfucker. So you liking me more would mean nothing <laughs> to me because <laughs> I'm all I... <laughs> I'm already my biggest fan. <laughs> so that's the only part that makes me mad. Motherfuckers think that I want to impress them. Like they, they think I value their opinion enough to lie. Y'all really got me fucked up. I don't even be fucking thinking about if other people have opinions. Like I'd be forgetting that other humans have opinions about shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> y'all got me fucked up. Anyway, hey, let's get into the podcast. What I do want to do is help you accomplish your goals because the only thing that I do care, only thing I do enjoy is praise. When you guys say that I help you accomplish your goals, that's the only thing. When you tell me, only thing that really makes me feel good if you say, oh man, this shit really helped me. This shit you did, this video you made, this content you made, this advice you gave me, it really helped me. I get something, you know, from that. You know, I don't, I don't know what it is. <laughs> but this that's why we're here <laughs> and we're gonna keep it up and that's what this podcast is all about all right so before we get into it i got a word from our motherfucking sponsors all right the first sponsor is the free newsletter that me and the homie started called big money methods 100 percent free uh click the link in the description subscribe and once you do that for free you will get you will get uh two emails a week right on methods to make big money. It's in the name. We try to make it super simple to understand, right? It's idiot proof, <laughs> right? And I'm, I'm writing articles and me and the homie, uh, Chris is writing articles and the homie Sean is writing articles. This is, uh, there is no middle class anymore. What do I mean? You're going to have to click on that to find out. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> uh, how Jomo, the joy of missing out, see what I did there? Transformed my life. What do I what am I mean? You're gonna have to subscribe to find out, baby. You have to subscribe. But it's um, you know, it's a lot, a lot of good articles. And make sure you subscribe right now. Right. The next sponsor is Thought Repellent. Thought Repellent is the easy to apply spray that keeps the hose away, right? So it doesn't keep all women away, right? I'm not calling all women's hoes, but some some hoes are women. <laughs> and we want to keep them away from us. <laughs> so this not only does it repel thoughts, it also repels uh, sluts, whores, stank whores, slut hoes, skeezers, tramps, Jezebels, scallywags, and skanks. <laughs> this way you can keep them out of your life. This is a real product that's coming, that's coming to market soon, but we need your help. That's why every one of your super chats tonight is going to go towards research and development for thought repellent. There's an epidemic going on in the world where these thoughts is infiltrating men's lives and ruining them, ruining them, ruining them. And for one super chat, oh, that's the wrong one. I really need to differentiate these. <laughs> your, your super chat today can help a baller stay safe from one of these thoughts. All right. This is a real product that's coming out. Y'all think I'm lying, but. Yeah, we'll see. I, I, I have actually never lied to you. <laughs> I swear to God. <laughs> this is coming. All your all your super chats go to research and development for thought repellent. All right. And last but not least, we have a discord that is associated with this podcast. It's the victory unit discord. Right. So all the victinators. Victinators who watch the podcast, man, you if you want to really take your 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 victory to the next level. You want to, we only do this twice a week. If you want to, if you want to be victorious every day, then you need to join the discord. I got free courses in there. It's a, we, we be, I, I go live in there multiple times a month. Okay. It's been once a month, but I'm about to pick it up. And, and when the, once the discord gets to 20,000 members, I will release a free sales course. I already got free courses in there. All right. One is called the baller mindset. It's an amazing course. If you've if you've been through the course and it's helped you in your life, type it in the comments. Let 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 the fellow victinators know. You know what I'm saying? Let the victinators know. All right. Um, 
but it's a free just join the discord uh you can get the baller mindset course i have another i have, I have tons of free course free value in there just for to help you accomplish your goals 100 free man 100 free i'm not trying to make new money off it but there's always a way to monetize you know saying anything and i'm gonna teach you how to make money right last but not least last but not least if you've been following this podcast for any amount of time then you have likely seen me recommending one stock in particular there's been one stock i've been recommending anyone knows who it is who wants to type in the comments so you know I've been recommending this stock for quite some time. And I'm uh sure. Yeah, you can show it. And the stock is called Celsius. All right. And I said, hey, me and Romulus, we was on here. We said, hey, man, when it goes to the 20, when it goes to the hundred, I'm sorry, the 200 day um moving average, you should buy it. And if you did that, if you followed our advice. You would be up 70%. <laughs> you would be up 70% on your money as of today. Had you been listening to me, right? It, it wouldn't matter how much money you put in. You'd have 70% more of it. Had you been listening to the king of ketosis. Now, people may be thinking, oh, man, you were sponsored by Celsius. No, 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 no. I just like to stop. They did not pay me to say this. I saw a fucking way for us to get money as a team. And I bought way too much of the stock. <laughs> so I said, fuck, I need to make sure this shit goes up. So this is, <laughs> it's, <laughs> I needed to, I needed to actually um, pump up the stock. Fuck. I needed to pump the stock up. Yeah. And we did it. We did it, everyone. We did it, everyone. I'm still holding. I'm still holding. Celsius does not pay me. I enjoy the drink, especially this motherfucking tropical vibe shit. I enjoy it. I like how they have motherfucking um, um, bitches <laughs> posing with the shit on their ass, with their on their ass on Instagram. Those hoes work for us, man. We are, we're owners of the of the company. Them hoes is twerking that thing with a Celsius on it for us. They did not. Celsius wouldn't pay me. Listen to how I talk, man. I'm talking about twerking and shit. They wouldn't pay, pay me. I will take the money, fucking nerds, if you're listening. But it's all good, man. It'd be me paying myself. I'm an owner. We're owners. All right. Buy more Celsius. <laughs> Buy more stock. <laughs> Listen, we gotta get we gotta keep pumping the stock up. Mm. Mm, it's delicious. It's delicious. All right, all right. Hey, I got a lot of stuff I want to cover today. And, you know, my homie Rhymeless is going to be in later to talk about more uh, trading advice. But for right. Oh, wait a do we have a super chat? Do we have the list? This, 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 one, one, this, there's a hero who already um, contributed to thought repellent and he needs to be acknowledged. Yes, it's Dylan actually uh, dropped his super chat be even before the show before starts. Him. Shout out to Dylan. Yep. Shout out to Dylan. He's a hero. He, he, wants to, he wants to help you. He wants to help you all. He did that for y'all. He did that for y'all. Someone in the chat says I look like Anderson Silva. <laughs> he wishes. <laughs> Listen, I got a new. <laughs> he's somewhere. If he heard that, and he, if he's watching Anderson, if you're watching, and I'm sure you are. <laughs> he's because you typed that, he's somewhere crying tears of joy. <laughs> Of that, I am of that I assure you. Hey, I there's something I want to talk about to you guys about today, and um, it's gonna help you fucking ball and um, shot call. And that's uh, you know, that's that's this um segment we like to call real talk. Mm, man, gangsta ass beats. <laughs> I made that beat too, man. We I was thinking, man, man, we need to get Tiger on this. Somebody need to call Tiger and Quavo right away. Tell them we got one. Tell them the streets got one. All right. Let me pull up my shit, man. All right. I 
I get questions all the time where people ask me, how do they stay consistent with their goals, especially when they're trying to restrain from something, whether it's a fitness goal and they're trying to restrain from uh, falling victims to cravings or if they're trying to, you know, sometimes or sometimes it's guys trying to give up porn, my fucking porn hub, only fans, X hamster, XNXX, X videos, bang bros, <laughs> brazers, <laughs> you porn, whatever. <laughs> They're trying to give it all up. Blacked. <laughs> <laughs> they're trying to give this stuff up, you know, or, 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 or maybe it's someone who's like addicted to video games or they're trying to abstain from a certain activity in service of their higher goals. And it's smart that they do that. I mean, it's smart that they want to do that, right? Because if you're not willing to sacrifice for your goals, then your goals become the sacrifice. But a lot of people have difficulty actually abstaining from these vices. Right. Sometimes it's smoking weed. Sometimes it's alcohol. Sometimes it's <clears throat> sometimes it's weed. Sometimes it's alcohol. Sometimes it's hoes. Sometimes it's. Yeah, I think I, I think it's all of it. <laughs> Maybe there's other shit you guys got going on. Whatever it is, this video is going to help you abstain from these things so you can actually um, expedite your achievement and start balling and or shot calling at a faster rate. All right. And I know a lot about this because, you know, a lot of times people say they see how they see my diet. They see how I don't eat carbs and you can eat carbs if you want to. Like I'm not trying to say carbs are bad. I just do a ketogenic diet. You can do whatever you want. I know you guys like freak out about that shit, but do whatever you want. I want you to be happy. But, you know, that's a strict diet. And people say, man, how do you do that? Don't you ever crave sweets? Don't you ever crave potatoes or rice and or candies and cakes and I'm thinking to myself candies and cakes I'm not a woman or a child the fuck you know what I'm saying but whatever I get it it seems like an arduous task for them right and what happens is what people will do is when they're trying to abstain from something uh, no, what, what happens is what people do when they're trying to, how do I put this? When, what happens is when people are trying to mitigate their consumption of some sort of vice, they go about it wrong. See, the reason you find it difficult to, uh, to quit indulging in these vices or these things that are stopping you from accomplishing your goals is because you are trying. Hold on. <laughs> Sorry, man. Okay. What happens is a bunch of jokes came into my head and it's like, it's too many at once, like when too many Chrome tabs are open and you're fucking <laughs> and the shit crashes. I had to reboot it. All right, here we go. <laughs> what, what happens is instead of just quitting these things, they try to do it moderately or they try to reward themselves with these activities after a brief period of abstinence. And they justify it by saying, oh, Man, I've been following my diet all week. I deserve this cake. Or I've been, uh, I ain't played no video games all week. So, you know, I, I can have a little bit, man. Everything in moderation. Everything in moderation. This is These are things people say. Everything in moderation. You got to enjoy life. Everything in moderation. No, no, no. Moderation is fucking you up. Moderation is fucking you up. Because abstinence is easier than moderation. Let me explain. So I've quit a lot of things over my lifetime. I quit smoking weed. I used to smoke a lot of weed, especially when I had, back in the day when I had a record deal. 
I used to be signed to Sony Records. I thought, hey, man, if I make the beats high, write the songs high, and record them high, then I'll be high on the charts. It has to be how that works. I wonder why they dropped me. I don't know. Anyway, I was, I was a frequent marijuana consumer. And instead of doing it moderately, I just quit. Right? Same thing with alcohol. Instead of having drinks sometimes here and there, oh, I'm a social drinker. I, drink, no, I just quit. Right? Instead of, you know, carb cycling or doing carbs every once in a while, I just went keto. Right? And it's so much easier than moderation, is what I found out. Because when you do something moderately, here's what happens. Every time you indulge in those things or you treat yourself with one of these things, then you start to crave it more, right? But if you don't, but if you just say, hey, I don't do this shit no more. This is not who I am. This is not what I'm on. Then you kind of draw a line in the sand and it makes it so much easier to abstain from it. But if you're doing it moderately or you're rewarding yourself with these vices every now and then or whatever, then what happens is you kind of torture yourself a little bit. Because you're all you start thinking about the next time you can indulge in these things, right? And then after you do it, you want it more. You see, excuse me. Excuse me. Like I may have a cheat day, I don't know, two, maybe three times a year, right? And it'll be like, you know, a holiday or something. After that cheat day, I start craving carbs. It's the weirdest thing. But Normally, I don't crave carbs, right? Sometimes when you know something's not an option and you know you can't have it, you don't feel that you don't desire it. It The desire goes away. So when people say, man, don't you want to drink sometimes? It's like, man, I don't even think about it, right? But if I drank sometimes, I would always think about it, right? Don't you want to get high off that OG Kush? Don't you want to smoke some of that motherfucking Mom, mom, mom for that purple, <laughs> smoke some of that purple dro haze. I'm like, nah, man, I don't even think about that shit no more. I used to. And quick, quick fact a lot of my friends were drug dealers. Yo, they just be naming shit different. They be having the same ounce of weed and they just giving you different names. Yo, this week, yo, man, I got that dead man. I got that motherfucking. I got that Skeletor right here, man. Yo, man. Yo, I got that Decepticon. It'd be the same shit. Anyway. They lying to you. Anyway. Because think about this. When you, the first time you give up something is that's when it's most difficult. You got to start going through withdrawal and that's when the cravings are the strongest. When you first quit. When you do something moderately, you force yourself to keep going through that cycle. You go through this charade over and over again. You have to keep doing the most difficult part over and over again when you do something moderately. So if I said, oh, I'll just drink sometimes, what's really happening is I'm just quitting sometimes. I have to start quitting again. Sometimes. And that's the hardest part. Once you get used to it, it's fine. But you have to keep doing that shit. Oh, you have to keep doing the most difficult part over and over again. So when you, you're not treating yourself when you do that, you're cheating yourself. You're making it more difficult than it needs to be. You're actually making it a far more arduous task when you have to keep starting and stopping. And I think you should think about it like that. Don't think about moderation as, oh, I'm just doing it sometimes. No, no, no. You're just quitting over and over again. And you have to go through that withdrawal phase over and over again. However, if you just say, hey, I don't do this anymore, then you only have to go through that shit once. Once. You never have to do it again. Like, I never have to quit smoking weed again. I never have to quit drinking again. You know what I'm saying? I never have to. I'll leave it there. <laughs> That's enough. That's enough. <laughs> yeah.
You get what I'm saying? But you motherfuckers doing it moderately. You're doing it all the time. Right? And I noticed this, you know, with the cheat day, this shit. That's why the cheat day is so fucking rare for me. In fact, I think last year I had one cheat day. It was Christmas Eve. Other than that, man, I don't want to do it anymore because I know that that I actually have to quit again. The cravings will be stronger after that indulging in it. Right. And it makes you stronger. Right. Because. It literally makes you stronger, because if you read a book called Willpower, I've recommended it many times. Abstaining from things actually takes willpower and willpower actually takes glucose. It takes energy to abstain from things. And they tested this on different people. They had tons of studies in a book. I'm not going to bring them up. You read the shit on your own time or just fucking trust me because I'm smarter than you. But you're wasting your actual energy and willpower on starting and stopping because you have to stop again. So you're wasting your willpower on bullshit. Instead of doing it all, instead of having to use your willpower all the time, why not just use it once (laughs) on this thing? Right. And it's because you've been lied to. Oh, before I get into that. This is important because willpower is a resource that gets depleted throughout the day. Studies have shown this. This is why sometimes, you know, spouses, they they fight at night or they get in arguments at night is because they've been using their willpower all day and then they're kind of drained with it by the time they get home. So maybe when this when your girl says something uh, fucking retarded, like you might <laughs> you might not have enough willpower left. Not to call her stupid. I don't know what you got going on, but that's an example. Or you see people snapping at their kids. When are they most likely to do it? When they're drained, when they're tired, right? Somebody with tons of energy is going to be more patient with their children, going to be more patient with their spouse, going to be more patient in all things. But imagine if you're wasting your willpower even more because you're starting and stopping all the time. It literally makes you weaker and i don't mean that on some oh you're you're weak like on some mental alpha male shit i mean like studies show that using your willpower make you physically weaker read the book willpower it there's there's tons of studies they cite in it actually using your willpower makes you weaker so you need because you only have so much of it each day it's like a battery why keep wasting it on the bullshit? Just go through that shit once instead of all the time the way you've been doing your whole motherfucking life. And it's not all your fault. A big reason is because you've been lied to. Everyone says this shit. Oh, man, moderation. Or, oh, man, you know, just enjoy life. Or, you know, you got to do this sometimes. Man, live a little. Have some fun, man. You can do it sometimes. People in your life will say this bullshit. Do you want their results? When people whose results I don't want to replicate give me advice, (laughs) I typically err towards the opposite of whatever they said. (laughs) So all these motherfuckers telling you, hey, man, you can do it sometimes. You can do it sometimes. Maybe you can. Depending on the thing, right? But if it's something that you know you need to quit, right? There are people who fucking drink all the time, get high all the time, do all types of shit and still succeed. I'm talking about the things that you want to quit. Maybe you don't want to quit weed. Fine. I'm not talking about that. But there's something in your life that you're trying to abstain from and you're having trouble with. Apply it to that. I'm not trying to pick on weed, alcohol or porn, right? You know what I'm saying? I ain't never going to quit porn. I ain't never going to quit consuming it or making it. Part of who I am. But that's me. It's not affecting me in a negative way. So maybe marijuana, weed, or crack cocaine is not affecting you in a negative way. I'm talking about the things that you're trying to abstain from. 
I'm not talking about these things in general. Whatever it is you're trying to abstain from. Maybe you want to eat fucking carbs all day. That's cool. I know a lot of people in great shape who eat carbs. No problem. I'm more effective and efficient when I'm on a ketogenic diet. That doesn't mean you will be, right? I'm talking about the things that you are trying to abstain from. Don't try to abstain from them. Don't do it moderately. Just put a line in the sand. Make a fucking decision. Hey, I don't do that no more. That's not who I am. People ask me to drink. There's no pressure. I, I feel no pressure when I'm out with at a function or an event and people try to offer me drinks. I feel zero pressure. People say, you want to drink? I just say no. And they ask. I'm like, no, I don't drink. So, you know, oh, you just have one drink. Oh, no, I don't drink. I don't drink. And they usually shut up after that. There's only been one person who's challenged me on this. And that was <laughs> Tristan Tate. <laughs> and then I saw uh, he was on uh, they were doing their emergency meeting and the, the homies Justin Waller and um, and um, fuck why do I do this yeah um, oh and, and Sterling Cooper Sterling Cooper um, Sterling Cooper aka <laughs> no, it was they were on the podcast with Justin Waller and, and Sterling Cooper, and and Tristan. They were they were talking about me for uh, for a second, and Tristan said, "I bet I can get Brandon Carter to drink. I got that super pal." Here's the thing: Tristan doesn't remember that he tried to get me to drink in Atlanta. It was at a war room meeting. They invited me to come through, and he tried to get me to drink, and he couldn't. Get me to drink. He for, And he forgot he did it. Why? Because he was drunk. <laughs> he was shitty drunk. But he's the only person who tried to pressure me to drink in my whole life. People actually respect when you say you don't do it. Right? There's only one person who would try to get you to. <laughs> There's only one person I can think of who would who would try to pressure you into doing something that you, that you um that you're trying to quit. That's Tristan Tate. <laughs> as long as you're not at a fucking <laughs> war room meeting with Tristan Tate, you shouldn't have to worry about it. <laughs> I digress. Typically, people not only do they respect it, like it, it, it's fine. You know, it, 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 it's fine. And then you get used to it, and then there's no pressure. I'm telling you, after a while, there's no cravings. Initially, there's tons of cravings. It's difficult. You see people drinking. Um, I used to smoke cigarettes. I don't know if I've ever talked about this publicly. Um, I smoked cigarettes since I was 14 and I quit. I might have quit smoking cigarettes in my early 30s. But I never, you know, I never talked about it because I didn't want to influence you guys to smoke cigarettes back then. I didn't want you guys to to see, oh, Brandon Carter smokes cigarettes. Shit, I'm going to do it. Because that's what you do. You see one motherfucker doing something and think it's okay for you. Here's the thing. To get lung cancer, you had to have the cancer gene. And I'm, I come from a long line of invincible motherfuckers, man. Like, everyone in my family, these motherfuckers smoke. They drink alcohol. They act fucking crazy. They don't take care of their health. They don't do nothing. And they live to be fucking 90 years old. Unless, of course, they die from gun violence. <laughs> right? That's, that's they, they, if you, if you are if my lineage, you're going to live to 90. No matter how much you smoke, motherfuckers be smoking packs a day. You're gonna you're gonna live to ninety, no matter what, or you're gonna die from gun violence. Those are the only two ways you go out <laughs> if you're if you're in my bloodline. So I just feel like you know cigarettes wouldn't affect me. But uh, I think a fan saw me smoking once, and I was like, "Fuck!" Now this motherfucker might think it's okay to smoke. Fuck! So I gotta stop smoking for you, motherfuckers. But that first year. It was tons of cravings. It was super difficult. I just quit cold turkey because that's the only way you can do it, right? But for the first year, man, every time I would see somebody smoking, I'd be like, man, he's probably really enjoying that. And I can go for one of those right now. But after a while, the cravings go away. And now I have no cravings. You get what I'm saying? Same thing with alcohol. I have no, zero cravings. Marijuana, zero cravings. Um, I only have cravings for carbs after a cheat day. That's why I do it almost never. Oh, I had one cheat day last year and it was on a holiday. Um, and I regretted it after. Like this is this, that's what actually that it was that moment 
it may be realized, oh, abstinence is more hard. Abstinence is more abstinence is easier than moderation when it comes to quitting something. It's so much easier to quit it than it is to do it sometimes or fuck around out here with it. You know, and I so I urge you guys to think about the things you're trying to abstain from. And I really I know for a fact you will have greater success and it will be easier for you to abstain from these things if you just draw a line in the sand and say, I don't do this anymore. Right. And don't make exceptions. Don't do it sometimes. Don't try to reward yourself. Don't don't give in to any pressure. Live a little, blah, 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 blah. After a while, they'll stop. Right. They may do it initially. They might say, hey, man, you can have some of this. Smoke some weed with us, man. We are. We are. I don't know what kind of shit y'all on, but your boys might be able to watch the porn, smoke a weed and fucking get high, whatever you fuck you guys do. You know. <laughs> <laughs> If you just quit after a while, the cravings will go away. People will stop pressing you. And then you'll be disgusted by it. Like now when I see a cigarette, I don't, I don't think. Oh man, that motherfucker's really enjoying it. I had I feel nothing. And that's where you want to get to. And the only way to do that is 100 percent abstinence. All right. Listen, I have another video on how to break bad habits and how to replace them with new habits. Uh, it should be popping up somewhere around here now. Maybe it's here, here, here. Maybe it's covering my face. I don't even know where it is. Click it now. All right. Hey, man. Do we got a super chat? Yes, we got Black Jack back. Actually, mm. Black Jack's back. It's been a while, man. Yeah, it's, he's, he's been back. abstaining from the podcast. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he's asking. Low Instagram engagement is impacting a lot of businesses right now, including myself, uploading daily reels that only get 200, 300 views, but no new clients. March has started very slow. Any advice on this? How good are your reels? Motherfucker's still on Instagram. Like people say low engagement is, is our, the only way everybody can be having no engagement is if People stopped watching Instagram and people stopped going on Instagram. And I don't see that happening anytime soon. I haven't seen any data to suggest that that's the case. So you're getting low engagement. And you need to figure out why you are getting low engagement. Because it's not it's not everybody. Yeah, there's a lot of business being affected by that. But that's all the time. That's it's never not been the case. The cream rises to the top. So how good is your content? You get what I'm saying? How much are you putting into it? Are you putting every, and I'm not saying you're not, but is there, is there, is there, are you leaving some success on the table? Like how well are you doing this shit? For example, my, uh, the dude who does my short form content, he produces it for me, my, the homie, uh, Ryan, um, McGinn again, whatever the fuck, you know what I'm saying? And, um, <laughs> I've known him for like 10 years. I think it's Ryan McGinn. That's the homie. Excuse me. He works with a lot of different clients. You get more energy when you burp some Celsius too. It's like it's like more energy coming this way as well. That's, that's why the stock's doing so well, man. Anyway, he has a lot of clients, and most of them don't get as much engagement as me, right? So that mean the engagement is low. No, no, no. Their engagement is low. And he, what he tells them is like when they say, "How come I'm not getting as many views as Brandon?" He says, because you don't work as hard as Brandon. When I come to shoot with Brandon, this motherfucker bought a big ass light just for shorts. I don't take the equipment out of here and put it in the other room when I do the shorts. I bought equipment just for shorts, right? You know what I'm saying? I fucking, sometimes I fast. <laughs> this is some real shit. Sometimes I fast 20, 24, 48, or 72 hours, depending on how fucking fat my face looks. When I get fat, I, I gain weight in my face. I start looking like an emoji or Pac-Man, you know? I don't know. I got a lot of fat cells in my face. It's so whatever. And But I know that my, you know, this is a fucking talking head video, so it stands to reason that maybe I shouldn't have a fat-ass face, so I might fast for three days before for the shit. We have, we, can, we have a whole bunch. I come up with, like, when I plan my topics out, I could probably show them this, right? I won't show them nothing. I'll show 
Give me a second. I sat here. I'm not going to send anything, man, but I sat here like the last time we filmed. I sat here and planned 180 fucking <laughs> fucking topics and videos. I planned 100. Oh, that's more than that, man. That's like 170 videos. 160. Yeah, 100, about 170 videos for this one day. And I planned them all out in Trello. You know what I'm saying? You can stop it. For one day of filming. Like these motherfuckers ain't doing that. They don't they didn't buy lights and cameras and setups just for the fucking shorts and the TikToks. Right. And, and I say that to say, I'm going super hard, pause, to for it to be good. And they're just showing up talking, making shit up on the fly, or they're trying to just repurpose shit. And then they wonder why, why they don't get the same results as me, right? Like if you want to, if you want to do, if you want to do what I do, you got to do what I do and you can't be out here skipping steps. You know what I'm saying? And then there's people who get better engagement than me, but I don't put the same effort in my videos as Mr. Beast does. And so I don't get the same results. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like it, it's, and I'm not saying maybe you can't put the same effort as me, in, right? But are you doing all that you can do? Are you maxing out your potential? You know what I'm saying? Because what you're doing is not working, right? So if you're if you're at, and, and, and I know you're you're a good dude and you mean well and I don't think you're talking crazy or being lazy, blackjack. I just want to switch your mindset, right? Are you is your engagement low, and you're looking for like some tactics or trick? Man, hey man, try posting at nine o'clock with eighteen hashtags. You know what I'm saying? Like you think it's gonna be it? Cause that shit, that's not the shit that's gonna work. Hey man, you got to use the viral things. You got to use the right sounds. And no, 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 that's not it. What it is is putting the effort into the content. Like putting the effort. So it's not that engagement is low. It's your engagement low. And when if your engagement is low, that means the market is speaking and it's giving you feedback, telling you that you have to adjust your approach. You know what I'm saying? If you want different results. And I and without looking at your shit, I couldn't tell you exactly what to do, but nor, sh nor should I. Like, uh, ask yourself, are you putting in 100% effort into, into this content? Or are you just throwing it up? Or is it just average? Right? Because average is not going to get high engagement. Is it average? Is it just okay? No, no, no. It's got to be like fucking as good as you can make it. You know, and if you can do that, you'll get more engagement. Like right now, uh, there's 200 people watching this podcast. And, you know, listen, I give out good content, right? But if I really wanted to fucking blow this shit up, what do I do, man? I'd have 17 bitches here, man, talking crazy and I'd make fun of them all and kick some of them out, right? You know what I'm saying? Like the homies. Like that's what the homies do. Like that's a fucking, that's brilliant. How they did that shit, right? It's, it's legit brilliant, right? But I'm 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 legit not willing to go that hard to accomplish that goal, and I made peace with that. So it's two hundred people's watching my shit. That's what's up, man. I'm gonna kick it with y'all, you know, because that's as hard as this is as hard as I'm willing to go, right? So your 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 how do I put it? Your ambitions need to match <laughs> your level of execution. Right. Your ambition needs to match your. The amount of effort you're willing to put in. Right. And you only get upset when those two things aren't in alignment. Right. When you're not willing to put in the effort, but you have these, but you have these ambitions for, you know, some lofty goal. But you're not putting in the effort that that would get that. Then there's a disconnect. And the dichotomy between the two is where you get the negative emotions. But here, man, you know, I got 200 people watching. Psh, let's go. It's exciting, you know, because that, those results are pretty congruent with the amount of effort that I'm willing to put in the podcast as of now. If I wanted to blow this shit up, man, again, I know what to do. A lot of people copy it off fresh and fit. <laughs> There's other motherfuckers who got me over, but they put 30 hoes on the panel. <laughs> That's all you got to do. It's simple. Hey, man, let's get 30 hoes in here. Kick some of them out sometimes. Make fun of them. It's, it's, it's like success leaves clues, right? But 
I'm not willing to do that <laughs> to blow the podcast up. So this is where I'm at. You know, I could just copy y'all fresh and fit like everyone else. And I, I'd get, I get some pretty interesting results. Uh, but you know, that's not where I'm at, but I, I'm okay with it. Cause my ambition and my, uh, willingness, they add up, you know what I'm saying? They, they, right. I mean, but the podcast will improve. It's just going to, it's going to get better. It's going to, not that it's bad, it's, but you know, there's going to be more views and it's going to happen gradually. So I'd rather have it grat. I, I I'm sacrificing speed for, you know, the amount of effort I'm willing to put in. That makes sense. If I needed to get a million fucking views per video, I know how to do that, but am I willing to do that? You know? So you got to think about that shit too, right? You probably know how to get a million. You know what you could do to get a million fucking views on a reel. You do some fucking wacky shit. You can like do fucking skydive, jump off a boat. I don't know. Jump out of a moving car. There's all types of shit you can do that to get you a million views. Are you willing to do it? And if not, then you might have to readjust your expectations is what I'm trying to say. Hey, hope that answered your question, Blackjack. And I wasn't trying to roast you. I just wanted you to kind of reframe what's going on. I fucks with you, Blackjack. Hey, speaking of Blackjack, we're about to get into the fucking market recap with my trading mentor, the big homie, former hedge fund manager, Romulus. Let's go. Yo, Romulus, what up, man? You know, Brandon, there's one stock that I know, and I, I usually have a an opportunity to chat with you a bit, but this is on my mind. There's one stock that I know for a fact that you do not own. What's it called? You do not own Apple stock. <laughs> I know you don't own it because we've been carrying on and on and on in the Victory Unit Legion for weeks and weeks and weeks about how that's not a stock you want to own, right? The thing is, I, I do own some of it, but I had it for like a long time. Do you? Like, like a, I'm, I'm talking a long time. Like, remember when you told us to sell everything? I didn't sell all my Apple. Right. So I took profits when you told me to, but I, there's still some in there. Yeah. Well, this sucker, yeah, hopefully not enough to hurt you. Yeah. No, I mean, you got to remember, like, we're talking about three years ago. So I'm yeah. in good shape. Yeah. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Well, two years <laughs> ago. Yeah, it was uh, January of 2022. Mm -hmm. Right before the bear market started, we got out of uh, got out of everything, sold it all, and uh, poor Apple, it's fallen from that tree. Yeah, uh, yep, it got hit again I, today. So, all right, well, and I know there's a couple stocks in your portfolio that we have been carrying on and on about as well. <laughs> one, in particular. yeah, there's just one in particular. What was that? That's that you're doing right fantastic. There? What? What is it that you're drinking right there? Oh man, you talking yep. about Celsius? We're, we're gonna get yep. There it is. <laughs> there it is. It's been fun to be a be a part of that over the last several months. We always say we'll show you know we'll show you some pictures, everybody. Yeah. Before we, uh, before we discontinue our conversation tonight, so stick around for that. It'll be coming up in just a minute. And here we go. You know, one of the things that separates us, Brandon, from the rest of the well, not everybody in the world, but most of the trading and investing community mm -hmm. hang on it's always an interesting challenge for me to get this going here hold on and i believe in you though all right let's see you, you got, got it up you there going? we go there we go shout out to right. ronnie this yep. you, know, that's the thing. you don't give up so you never give up that makes us different around here in <laughs> the understanding of the history of the market see people come into these things like for example oh yeah i'm gonna buy bitcoin because my buddy's buying it it's going up and they, they don't have a clue what bitcoin even is they don't have a yeah. clue. So the other day, I was sitting down for lunch. I met a fellow older guy, still working, but older guy. And he's got a 78-year-old brother who just retired. And his brother took 80% of his retirement money and just put it into this. The s Just did this the other day. I mean, just like a few oh, days. The other day at all-time highs? Yeah. That's it. See? Your reaction is so instinctual but correct wacky that's right wacky 78 year old guy obviously he has no month no future income streams this is it right 80 percent of all of his money no understanding so again what we bring to our victory unit centurions in the legion mm -hmm. is an understanding of market history that allows you to step back and know when this is a, a highly technical term that was refined over many years that you know when something's wacky mm, and you yeah. got to step back and take that 
breath and understand that, man, that's just wacky buying this stuff at all time highs after it's been running up and it's overbought mm -hmm. and there's bearish divergence. And I, if I'm saying some things that you guys don't understand, stick around. I'll tell you how to straighten that out and get yourself educated up on that in a moment. No worries. So yeah, uh, take it easy, Damn. breathe, take a, uh, a step back yourself as well. We're going to get you educated up here. No problem. Oof. All right. So S and P 500 does hit a new all time high just a, a day and two ago. Come on right here and here. And then people, people always ask, this is another thing that another mistake people make is, well, why did the market go up today, Brandon? And why did the market mm. go down today? Sometimes, you know, there's a reason. There's some kind mm. of an announcement that the Federal Reserve might be doing this or that. There might be something from the government, an election, a conflict. Something can happen that can move the market up or down. Yeah. But most days, and I would suggest that probably 70% of the days that are out there, are just, the market just moves. It just moves. Now, the financial media will always find a reason. You can always attach a reason to it, but it just moves. It went down today because we've noticed these bearish divergences. Market's been going up for months here since October, but starting over here, price goes higher and the mm. momentum indicator has been going lower and lower. Eventually, that'll just take a little bit of a toll. Mm. Eventually, you don't know exactly when, but eventually it will. And that's more likely than not, the only thing that happened today was this: these bearish divergences that have been around for months just kind of took a toll. Just took a toll. That's all it most likely was. Yeah. People always want to attach some kind of an explanation that they can fully understand, comprehend, and then fool themselves into believing yeah. that they have this sense of, oh, I know what's going to happen next. That's you what they're doing to themselves. Uh, you the instead you got to take what the market gives you and find a way to go. make money out of it. Yeah. Yeah, it does and it doesn't matter. We we spend far less time in the legion talking about why these things are happening. Yeah. The got pushed because of this or that and much more time discovering what might happen next. It's it's like my boy man the other day he was asking me, man, why are my girls always tripping, man? Like, oh man, cuz they're crazy. Why are you trying to understand it, man? You just need well, to well, figure well, it. you just need to work with it. That. Uh -huh. give you a much more simple financial yeah. <laughs> because they're girls. Yeah. Not that they're crazy. <laughs> yeah. And crazy people, man. That's and you just need to crazy. work with it and find a way to win no matter what. Yeah. <laughs> no, we just we have a good time with that. But and you mm. know, don't don't anybody take offense to anything that Brandon and I say up here. Oh no, it is there there are there are maybe three girls watching, and I assure you they're lesbians. Don't worry about right. it. And that's fine. We love them all. We love everybody. We love, we love all guys. We do have, we do have uh, female centurions in our legion. Oh. And they're, willing, <laughs> they're willing to step up right next to us and fight the battle. Fine. Let's do it. Hey, that's what I like to see. Let's man. do it. So, G.I. Jane. All right. Yep, exactly. So that's what's going on in here. Now, mm -hmm. there's a little bit of a different level of concern when – let's take Apple. Let's go back to Apple. Okay. Yeah. All right. That is intense. Yeah, let's go. Uh, and the reason this is important to talk about is because it is still, even though it's switched places with Microsoft, it is still the second most valuable company on planet Earth. Yeah. A few weeks ago, it was the most valuable company, but Microsoft has taken over that title uh, from Apple. Apple continues to go down. Microsoft has kind of more moved sideways uh, mm -hmm. the last couple of weeks, down today, but more moved sideways the last few weeks. So if you notice, I have to, you know, we're really going to expand this here. The red line is an important indicator. It's just a, an average for about 200 days of price. Mm -hmm. and it is an important uh, differentiator between a lot of experts and professionals say that's the difference between a bull market and a bear market. Mm -hmm. Okay. And you notice Apple is above the 200 day moving average really since way back in here. Yeah. So 2023, this is January of 2023. Mm -hmm. It's above this red line, a little bit here, but it's above the red line. But then what, has, what starts to happen a couple of months ago. This is January. It's tapping it on that red it, line. It bounces. It tags it. It bounces. It tags it. It bounces. It tags it. It bounces. And I'm starting to think, well, there's only so many times yeah. that Apple is going to hit that wall before busting through it. Uh. The wall is getting weaker each time Apple hits it. Mm -hmm. Just take your fist, go up to a piece of drywall, and yeah, just start. Keep... you don't even have to wail on it. Just start hitting the same spot again and again. Eventually, your fist is going to go through, right? Mm -hmm. And when it goes through, you're going to go all the way up to your shoulder <laughs> mm. because you've weakened it 
from successive punches in the same area. Yeah. Is this making sense? I know this is a little bit technical, especially for the folks that perhaps don't have any trading experience. No, that, that's a good analogy. I think people are getting that. You know? So you hit it again and again, and eventually, and it, this, isn't, this doesn't happen every single time. Nothing is like that in stocks and trading. Mm. But the odds are that it's going to go through. And when it does go through, the odds Man, are higher. Man, that, that went it through violent. To come down. Your, your fist is going to go through the wall, and then your arm is going to go all the way through up to your shoulder. And that's exactly what happened here. So if you look at the Dow, the reason I'm bringing this up is because you notice the Dow is above yeah. the blue line, which is a little bit of a faster uh, type of an average for months. Your but blue, now, your blue right, line is the 21 day moving 21 average. Day, right. Okay. Your red line is a 200. Down in here. Right. Got that's it. not something to be concerned about right now. It's too far below. Mm -hmm. But the blue line, it doesn't get touched for months. And then all of a sudden it gets hit and it gets hit and it gets hit. And it gets hit, 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 and now it's through it. Yeah. And now perhaps it stays through it uh, for a bit. That is a, a different of level of a development. Now we can mm. go to the NASDAQ. This is where Apple and Microsoft and Meta, Google, Amazon, mm. Tesla, and of course, NVIDIA, all these companies are headquartered over in the NASDAQ. That is not yet through the, the blue line, but it's starting to hit it with successive frequency. Yeah. Okay. And this is a bit of an early warning sign that possibly things might be changing for how long? Don't know. Mm. That could be a few days, could be a few weeks. I would suggest this that if stocks continue to sell off more rather than less for the next few weeks, closer to the end mm. of the month, one of the things you'll want to watch for this is one of our favorite trades is we, we come to the end of the quarter, the end of the first quarter which would be the end of March. That's coincident yeah. here. The stock market, unless the market really gets hit between here and the next two and a half weeks, the market will have some kind of a positive gain for the year. Mm -hmm. When you see that and you're coming into the end of the month, end of the quarter, and stocks have been pulling back for some period of time, days or weeks, in the final few days of the quarter, the institutions will want that market marked up. Oh, so they can say back to their investors. Yep. That, yeah. So they'll push it. Mm. You can ride that. There. Right. That's a great trade for everybody to keep an eye on. You got a couple of weeks, but don't be surprised if the market continues down more or less, generally speaking, and kind of in a trendy up and down fashion for another few weeks, that there's an effort to salvage it at the end of the quarter and post it up. And you'll see that happen mm. in the last three or four trading days of March. All right. Yeah. So guys, make sure y'all join the discord a couple weeks. So y'all can stay, you're going to stay abreast of that. Oh yeah. that And that's great segue, by the way, mm -hmm. into what we're going in tomorrow, 4 15 PM Eastern time. We do have a traders town hall. That's for everybody here. We want to invite you in. It's a free event. You got to be in Discord, though. We'll put out an invitation tomorrow morning so you can uh, click on a link and uh, know where to find it. But you have to be in our Discord. And you can see right there, there's a link at the bottom of your screen. Join that for uh, for free. Click there. That's Traders Town Hall tomorrow at 415. And if you come on there, you can wish our Legatus Greg a happy birthday. Oh, it's his birthday tomorrow. tomorrow. His birthday is tomorrow. Or, um, so oh. you can do that tomorrow live in our Discord at our Traders Town Hall. So why don't you join us and you can learn a little bit more about the fun stuff that we've been talking about today. So that's that. Now, gold hits a new closing all-time high, not yet eclipsed the intraday high set back on, let's, let's see, that's December 4th, mm -hmm. which is fine by us because we own this one and have had it for a mm -hmm. bit and it's posting up uh, pretty monstrous returns for us. And by the way, the reason you see a difference between this and the actual gold future price because this is trading in the morning before the market opened. And you can mm. see how it tailed way up and then pulled back later in the day. By the time the market opened, that's what you got over here. Mm. That's why you see the difference in those two pricing behaviors. Little things like that you got to keep an eye on and be, uh, be aware of. Okay, so that is gold. And oil prices have also been interesting lately because mm. there's a bit of an uptrend over here, as we call it, um, a, a struggling nation uptrend. Something that we've been, you know, we own a little bit of this as well. And I'm looking for a possibility of adding to that position if it gets a little more spunky again, because this right here could be a nice solid breakout 
This is called an ascending triangle if you're keeping score at home or if mm. you like to uh, nerd out with us. Anyway, this has a much higher price target. And if it does continue, you can expect to see higher oil prices over the next two to three months. If you do see that, it means you'll be paying more to fill up your car at the gas tank, which then means that these interest rates that have been falling will probably not stay low for too long because oil is still the number one um, economic, let's say we have input. We'll say the, the number one economic input of any mm -hmm. consumer uh, producer expense in the world is oil. Okay. We've got goods and services out there, but oil is still the most, uh, it's the heaviest spent, heaviest uh, item that people spend money on, the most money in the world. Oh, wow. And if it goes up in price, it will create inflation that will then spiral and spread into other parts of the economy. So you want to watch oil pretty closely. We're in it for the trade to make money, but if you're looking at the bigger picture, you want to keep an eye on that for those purposes as well. All right. Uh, so I think we covered a lot of ground here tonight, Brandon. I got a few questions about individual stocks, if you don't mind. Uh, well, you think I mind, please. Let's go. <laughs> uh, well, first of all, man, I would just like to give you your flowers. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because, you know, I was asking you about Celsius all year, all right? Year. And you said, I remember you said, hey, when it hits the 200-day moving average, that's when you need to pile into this shit. Yeah, and, and you said it right here on, on, the, on, the, on the podcast. You said it many and, times. Yeah, we said it many times. We kept saying it over and over again, you know, and uh, I echoed those sentiments after you said it. And anyone who did that, anyone who did that, man, that was that was a free trade you got. Anyone who did that is up, what, 71%? Yep. I mean, it, it went up 20% just a few days ago. In one yeah, day. yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like they, they, man, they smacked the hell out of earnings. I like to think that the victory unit has something to do with that. I know we I like that. <laughs> we've been out there talking about this uh, quality product. We've been talking about yeah. the opportunity to buy the stock at a, at a price that made sense. Mm -hmm. And then, bam, boom, here you go. Thank yeah. you very much. Yeah, man. It's a, uh, it's a beautiful thing. <laughs> it's a beautiful thing, man. So, uh, but it was, I just, I, I wanted to talk about that, but. I wanted to ask about Google. So Google it looks, and Apple, it, both yeah. struggling. You know, that they six months ago, we had the Magnificent Seven, which was Apple, Microsoft, Meta, Google, Amazon, Tesla, and NVIDIA. Everybody got that? Those were the Magnificent yeah. Seven. Now you're down to probably the Fantastic Four. <laughs> you got Amazon, Meta, NVIDIA, well, that might be it. Oh, and Microsoft, yeah. Microsoft. Right? But but yeah. look at but look at but look at Google. But I'm saying this is the first time it hits. The reason I ask, it hasn't been fucking with flirting with the 200 day moving average. This is the first time it's hit it in a in a while. All back here. Yeah. So I don't yeah. I don't know, man. My my brain says, hey, that's a buy. Yeah, I would but, wait a bit on a lot okay. of these tech stocks to let the correction unfold. If you look at the S and P 500. It's only had a couple of down days in here. Um, mm. And again, we could be looking at a situation where there's a bit of a, a few days or a few weeks of a pullback um, and let the uh, let the stuff get to at least mildly oversold status. Okay. But Google All certainly right. is a stock that could surprise. They're, they're not giving up on the AI. They've had a misstep, but they're mm. going to correct that. They're going to make it right. And even Apple's not dead. I mean, that, that's the thing. It's having a bad several weeks. Yeah. But if I see the stock go down again, here's what I would look at. Yeah, I'd be looking at buying Apple first before Google in the very okay. near term for a okay. trade. Okay, for a trade, Apple might be done long term for quite a while. Mm. Like it rallies right. back to the 200 day, which is uh, a bit higher than here. That's a pretty big rally, and the stock could then continue lower. It's going to be a bit, you know, like Netflix has been doing well, but people don't realize that the stock is still over 100 bucks away from its all time high that it hit like four and a half years ago. Yeah, yeah, all right. And Amazon still hasn't hit a new all-time high. And Google never hit an all-time high. Um, Tesla is still hundreds of dollars away from all-time high. Tesla's in bed. Nah, yeah, that, Tesla's that, in that bed. chart looks hideous. Hideous. So that's like, why I'd be I looking at short Tesla. that. If I, if I didn't know anything, I just looked at the chart. I'd be like, oh man, when's the, I'd be looking for shorts on Tesla. Yeah, yeah, and mm -hmm. that's kind of what you what you'd be looking at here for Google really? well for a bit. Um, they're going to get their act together, but it's it could just be a bit. I wouldn't be in. A oh, hurry. so you're thinking like around there, huh? Yeah, I wouldn't be in a hurry to buy. Yeah, let it pull back in here. Um, okay. And I wouldn't be in a hurry to buy the stock right about now. Again, I'd be looking to have 
uh, an Apple trade first before Google because Apple's just been beating up a lot more and would you, stretching would you, would you, down a lot more than Google is right now. Would you sell puts as for on Apple as for a trade, like for a, a good injury? Yeah, yeah, that would be a good trade. Yeah, you sell Ooh. cash your puts at the Come 160, on. 165 range. 165? All right, all right. Because <laughs> if, if it goes to 165 between tomorrow and Friday, after the fall that it's had, that would set it up for at least a temporary bounce in the next week. And boom, Bob's your uncle. You make some money. Yeah, you might not even you might not even get a sign is what I'm hearing. No, right, right. You might not even. And if you did, again, you would just be at, probably out of it with a bounce early next week. Yeah. You know, and if you could I buy like Apple. That. And again, this is strictly because it has been pummeled for weeks and it's just really oversold right now. And it got a lot of nice gaps in there. Got some gaps that it could fill up along the way up. Mm. You know, Tesla filled up some gaps here uh, last, yeah, last couple of seasons. Yeah, it, it, it filled that gap perfectly. It filled that gap perfectly and started coming back down. So uh, if it wasn't so volatile, I would have shorted it at that. Like I was looking at it, but I was like, man, I'm not fucking with Tesla like that. Yeah, that's okay. Because Tesla's mm -hmm. a stock that is, when it goes on a run, it can run it you can know, do five anything. Ten, percent for a couple of days in a row. And you don't want to be short yeah. that. Yeah. But if you were long, and you're looking for a place to get out, then that would have been the place to do that. Yeah, yeah. Use that information, nah. you know, both ways, right? Yeah, right. boss. So, and that's what I'd be looking at for Google is I'd be a little bit careful with this one um, on the, the near term because it's just breaking the 200 day right now. And, uh, but again, longer term, as long as the S&P is maintaining its generally bullish status, which the S&P would have to fall quite a bit from here to really wreck the concept of the bull market that's in. And uh -huh. I just don't see that happening this year, this calendar yeah. year. Yeah, it's going to. You think, so you expect more upward momentum, like throughout the yeah. year. Yeah, I mean, that's right. if you could you like know, do a, a five or ten percent correction, and that would still maintain the integrity of the bull market and still give it opportunities to continue higher throughout most of 2024, even if it takes a couple of months or more to re uh, kind of reset itself and get going again. Um, so I would. We selling spy puts. Like, I mean, we're, I mean, we 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 selling we we selling spy puts or what? If that's the case, not quite yet. And then you can just okay. do this. What you would do instead of spy puts because it's uh it's three hundred um you know five hundred dollars a share. Mm. You sell this one. Uh S O S. So so what's S O S S O S S O is two to one, same direction as the S and P. Oh, okay, okay. So it's a, it's a, it's a it's a um it's a leverage ETF. ETF. Got it. Leverage ETF two to one trades three and a half million shares a day. It's got decent options on it. So this one pulls back a little more. And there's a couple of others. You know, And it's cheaper. It, that's what I mean. You, you can't, yeah. like SPY, for example, if that gets assigned, you know, one share, 100 shares is going to cost you 50 grand. Yeah. And you can't do less than 50 grand. You can't do less than 100 shares. Ah. Uh, kind of activity. As opposed to this, 100 shares cost you seven grand. Hey, man, I got seven grand. Right. <laughs> and and I got 50 grand. I was like, I, I, I've sold a lot of Greg knows, man. Greg knows I'd be hitting him up. Hey, man, what do you think about spy? <laughs> like, I've, I've done that. Trip. I was doing, yo, when they would, yo, it was, I might have, it might have been last year, the year before, back when they were doing, when they options on spy was Monday, Wednesday, Friday. I was yeah. hitting Greg up multiple times a week. I was being super too aggressive, maybe, but I was running iron condors like, Every other day on the home spy. <laughs> yeah, it works. You know, it, it was insane. Like that was kind of probably a little reckless, man. I was probably gambling more, but I was running iron condors on spot. And you can do that when you have a little more money. See, that's yeah, I got scared it. when they when they be every when they, they moved to everyday options. I was like, oh, I don't even know what's going on anymore. And it's still, <laughs> it's still a bit of an unknown territory. So you have the market pulling back, and again, you can use SSO. But you got you know all the major indexes pulled back the last few days. So mm -hmm. let's take the Russell 2000, which I'm, which is, you know, this is looking constructive in here. This is looking more bullish than uh, really the other charts because it hasn't just gone straight up. It's it spent some time consolidating. It's had some backing and filling. It has a little bit of a, um, a decent uh, integrity to the breakout. All right, so you can. Does IWM the, have a leverage ETF? Yeah, he, I mean, he, I'm he, sure they do. Three to one. Hey. Even lower price than SSO. 100 shares cost you four grand. This three to one options. You've, we've done this trade, you and I. Brad. We've done oh yeah, yeah, I just didn't know. I didn't know what I was trading. Man. So listen, yeah. sometimes right. when you send a, when you tell me a trade, I just buy it. If yeah. Romulus said it, fuck it. I don't have to research all. I don't have to fact check Romulus. I'm just we gonna make go. money, right? So yeah, <laughs> this is a great one for those. 
And as the market's pulling back, so here tomorrow, let's say IWM goes down, which this will go down as well. Okay. Mm -hmm. There's options that expire this Friday, a few days later. Okay. You could Is this put, weekly options on this or? Yeah, they're pretty, they're pretty liquid here too. So okay. what, what is it? Uh, it closed today, 3927. Mm -hmm. Let's say I, I sell a put a 37 and a half because mm -hmm. you want to give this room because it's three to one. So yeah. if you lost 2000 only falls one and a half percent, four and a half percent. You got to be careful with this. Yeah. You got to make sure you understand the math and what you're getting yourself into. But you sell a 37 and a half, <laughs> odds are low that between Wednesday and Friday afternoon that IWM is going to fall that much further. You probably wouldn't get assigned. Yeah. If you did get assigned, then Monday or Tuesday, because it's so oversold, it would be ready Let's for go. a bounce. You, we do this all the time around here. We do it all the time. All the time. That's all we do. These trades are just, they're layup trades. We do them all the time. Mm -hmm. But you got to come into the Legion. You got to join us tomorrow at the Discord, uh, in our Discord at the Traders Town Hall. You got to join the Legion. You got to get the text alerts. You got to get the research. You got to get the written content about this stuff. So you can take mm -hmm. these trades too. I mean, they're, they're all, they're easy. I'm telling you, they're easy, easy trades. Man. Okay. Easy trade. They're just all over the place. So uh, anyway, a couple different ways that you can take advantage of the current set. You, you can even do T triple Q. I mean, this is the NASDAQ three to one. Probably dropped almost 6% today. Ooh. You can do this. You can do SOC. Uh, this is the uh, semiconductor. So this would be NVIDIA and Intel and the other oh. big semiconductor All of them. I hope y'all taking notes, man. Y'all done got a lot of information today, man. Yeah, all the ones I just showed you, every single one of these ETFs are three to one. They all have options that expire every week. And we have mm. traded every one of these either directly and also using cash secured puts and selling cover. We've done it all. And it, we on, hit these things all the time. Let's go. All right, man. Well, thank you so much, Ron. <laughs> this man, I uh, appreciate it. We tra guys, Trader Town Hall tomorrow. Join the Discord. Yeah, and uh, it's free. You get more information. Let's get this money, y'all. Absolutely. All Thanks, right. man. As always, great to be with you guys. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye. All right, peace. Come on. Come on. All right. Uh, do we have some super chats before we get into the next uh, segment? Yes, we do. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to pull up Blackjack's uh, follow up. Uh, um, so <laughs> he's asking, what would your nephew legal leaks include in his reels? I include video highlights of games, winning results for my picks and clips of me doing sports betting research. Reels are 30 seconds long. Hey, man, listen, fuck what he's doing, man. Like, he's not good at this shit. Um, this is the, the, yo, par, parlay Trev is the best marketer when it comes to uh, sports betting on Instagram. I, I don't know about his fucking trading, but I was telling fucking my nephew to start, um, doing what parlay Trav does, but you know, man, it's hard to be a prophet in your own town and you know, it's hard to be a prophet in your own land, but, uh, hold on. Uh, Parlay Trav, I'm gonna bring your shit up right now. Pause. All right. This motherfucker is the best. Like, so study him. You study him, not everyone else. But you need to be doing what Parlay Trav is doing. You know what I'm saying? And you and look, you know, he's 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 crushing it. You know what I'm saying? That's that's what you need to be doing. Model this motherfucker. You know, just don't excuse me, don't guess, just do what's working. All right. What else we got? The second one we got is Jay. What are uh, B. Brown and Carter's thoughts on microdosing psychedelics? Uh, man, we have an unpublished video on this. Do I? <laughs> yeah. What was I thought? We about? never published it. Probably it was. I think it was short. Oh, listen, man. I don't have no <laughs> thoughts on it, man. I've seen people take psychedelics and go crazy. I've also like legit crazy. All right. If you were, if you look at uh my the home, the friend friend um connor murphy the shit he was on in 2000 that was a psychedelic induced um adventure that he went on <laughs> and i've seen other people man just go down some i have a lot of stories of these entrepreneurs man talking about oh man psychedelics you know and uh here's the thing bro i'm not saying there's not benefits but it's like and I don't mean this in no fucking um, disrespectful way or racist way, but it's like the likelihood is you're probably white saying this. 
All right. And, and, and I don't mean it just on a disrespectful way, man, but y'all always looking for something, man, uh, some other shit, man. Like, yo, this shit ain't that complicated. Like, life is not that kind. You make it when you, oh, man, I need to do psychedelics or I need to go do ayahuasca or I need to do other shit. Your life is way simpler than that, man. Here's the thing you're going to live for a while, then you're going to die. In between, in between, make some money, try to fucking leave the world better than you fucking found it, and that's it. <laughs> that's it and then it's over maybe something happens after maybe not but you ain't got to think that hard about it you definitely don't need no motherfucking drugs to do that shit it's like every fucking week i gotta talk one of my white friends out of fucking going to fucking the middle of the desert and sitting in the circle eating fucking fucking bullshit with some hippies it was like motherfucking why <laughs> like why man Oh, you struggling? Mm, must be hard. You know what I'm saying? Hey, man, just make some money, man. Shut the fuck up. You probably wouldn't have to. You wouldn't probably wouldn't think about doing drugs if you just made some money, right? <laughs> listen, listen, make, pay attention. Drugs is almost never the answer. <laughs> like seriously, whatever the question is, drugs is almost never the answer. I'm not saying that it you, does it, it. It doesn't have medicinal purposes, or it's like more successful people have become successful without <laughs> drugs than the latter. You know what I'm saying? So, but I've, I've seen people do psychedelics and get fucked up. Like I've seen that shit and, you know, I would just be super cautious. You don't know how it's going to affect you. And it's a bit of a Russian roulette, you know, unless you know how it's going to affect you then, and you find it beneficial. I'm not telling you not to do it either. If, if that's your shit, then fuck with it. It's just to say you need it. All I need is caffeine, TRT <laughs> at this age, caffeine, TRT, and um, Celsius. <laughs> what you need to do is drink more Celsius. You don't even need drugs, man. This is natural high. <laughs> Nat nat Natural-ish high, man. Just drink more Celsius. This motherfucker's not drinking enough Celsius. That's the problem. Mm -mm -mm. I forgive you, my I forgive you, son. You know not what you do. All right. I got another video, and this is real good. Hopefully, I can do this in the next 30 minutes. Um, this is uh if it's you know, some some habits that you need to learn, you know, and, and that's a segment we like to call habits of a winner. You played the wrong music. I didn't make that beat. My bad, my bad. It's all good, man. I forgive you, I man. You know not what you do. Let's go. Listen, man, don't don't shame Nima for that, man. <laughs> we all make mistakes and we I think we need to forgive him. Please. And we need to be we need to be just tolerant. <laughs> he is he who is without sin cast the first stone. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> that's what the jizzle said. You know what I'm saying? That that that's the OG personal development shit. You know. Uh, <laughs> mm -hmm. All right. <sighs> this video is not for you if you don't want to accomplish extreme success. If you don't want to be super successful. If you want to be average regular then i don't want to waste your time man go do some other shit you know what you don't need to do is watch this video and then say oh i can't do this man what about me i got 37 kids or some shit listen i ain't tell you to have all them kids i ain't tell you to fuck all them women without a condom i told you i would have told you to use a condom i'd advise against impregnating all the women stop blaming me or your children for your failure all right <laughs> In fact, you should be watching them little bastards instead of watching this video, man. You know what I'm saying? Because they need diapers, pampers, and a dad who's not a dipshit. Hopefully, it's, hopefully their stepdad is watching this video. <laughs> so they can maybe experience some success in their lives because they're not going to get it from you. All right. <laughs> Not with that attitude. There's something that's been holding you back from becoming successful or as successful as you want to be. 
right? And it's this lie. It's this lie. You see it all the time. I see it everywhere I go. People are telling this lie. People have been telling this lie forever. You've been hearing this lie all your life. And the lie is that you need to have a balance, right? Specifically work-life balance, right? I want to tell you that it's a lie. It's a lie. And if you want to be extremely successful, if you just want to be a regular guy doing regular shit, hey, I'm sure you have redeeming qualities outside of your work ethic. And you you could just do that. You don't need to watch this video. Go be balanced and everything's fine. If you want extreme success or extreme results, you can't get there being balanced. Because the world is not crazy enough, not yet, where you can get extreme results without extreme effort. All right. And the whole, but even if you want to be a, oh, shit. <laughs> I was, my son, had, I was drawing some shit with my son, Nima. Yeah, man, I'm a good, I'm a pretty good artist sometimes, you know. All right. <laughs> All right. Because <laughs> here's, here's what your life looks like. I'm going to get some assistance from these shapes. Hold on. Okay, I see. Okay. So people think when they think work life balance, I'm not even really sure what they what they think they mean, but I think they mean what I'm about to say, right? I think it should be equal, right? Your life there should be work. There should be life. And then, you know, what are you going to do the other third? You're going to what? Sleep. <laughs> so a perfectly. Oh, shit. Right. So a perfectly balanced life, a perfectly balanced life, you would be do it'd be eight hours of work. Eight hours of recreation, party. All that, or whatever the fuck else you do, and then eight hours of sleep. That would actually be a perfectly balanced life, right? And it makes sense if you don't think about it. <laughs> it makes sense. Oh, let's separate these things. But here's the thing your work and your life are not separate things, right? Your work, life, and sleep, these are not separate things, right? Because if you don't get enough sleep, will that affect your work? Will that affect your personal life? Yes. Right. If if something happens in your fucking life, if you get a divorce or uh, you have a health problem or something, is that going to affect your work? Yes. If you get fired from your job. Or you get laid off or you're stressed out at work, is that going to affect your life? Yes. So you only have one life. There's no work in his life. There's one thing. It's, it's integrated, right? Hmm. But the worst part of this is trying to be balanced. This is what everybody talks about. And this is, this equals average. Hold up. Ah, fuck. What's wrong with this pen? What is wrong with this pen? Sorry, I lost my cool for a second. I'm back. <laughs> I can draw. I can make that more legible. A lot of people are going to see this video. <laughs> this equals average. Right now, it has to because this is what most people do. They work eight hours a day. They sleep eight hours a day. And then they spend eight hours doing other shit, right? That's, there's no way that can't equal average. But what is, what does the average American's life look like? Well, the average American is not living a life that you should aspire to. You don't need to watch personal development and self-help videos to be one of these motherfuckers, right? Because the average American has less than $1,000 in a bank account. That's a real stat. Put it on the screen. Not now, but 
in, in post. <laughs> the average American is 17 pounds overweight. Fat losers. <laughs> I'm sure they have redeeming qualities outside of their financial condition and appearance but <laughs> i don't i don't i don't think you can call being fucking 17 pounds overweight and less than a thousand dollars in your bank account successful right and that's what a balanced life leads to you know what i'm saying trying to be average is basically i'm sorry trying to be balanced is literally taking a vow of mediocrity right because balance and average are synonymous. They are synonymous. They are synonyms when, as they pertain to success and achievement. Right? Now, because extreme success has to come from extreme effort. The world is not crazy enough for it to happen any other way. That shit don't even happen in the movies. That shit does not happen in Hollywood. You have never seen a movie about somebody accomplishing something great and they just strolled to their goal. And it was super easy, man. They had a bunch of recreation and, and, they, and they lived a totally balanced life and they accomplished something fucking stupendous. One, that'd be a boring ass movie. And two, Hollywood wouldn't put out something so unrealistic. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't even happen in a movie, man. Batman was not fucking balanced. James Bond does not live a balanced life. Sure, he may get drunk and fuck a whore every fuck a whore or two every movie, right? But for the most part, that's a very small part of what he does. He's really tipping the scales in fucking action and work, saving Great Britain and or the world from some nigga right you know? <laughs> like it does it doesn't work like that everyone you look up to everyone who's your hero was none of them were balanced and every once in a while you see these rich guys talking about living a balanced life on the internet and one of them comes to mind uh, my, my, my homie the big homie one of my mentors ty lopez he's been going around saying this and you know, it's difficult to see the picture when you're inside the frame. But he's saying that now because Ty is a multi, multi fucking millionaire. He's really got a, a ton of money. But I remember being with Ty, kicking it with him before the fucking here in my garage video. And it was not balanced. This motherfucker worked. I saw it. But it's a secret. To why he's saying his balance. I don't think it felt like hard work to him at the time. And I, I think you see that with a lot of these entrepreneurs. You know, this whole balanced life, when they start saying this once they're rich, it's the domain of it's, it is the domain of the privileged. Right? Once you reach a certain amount of success, you can say all that shit. Or success is relative. So if you're happy where you are, then yeah, being balanced makes a lot of sense, right? If you're satisfied with your current level of achievement, then yeah, being balanced makes a ton of sense, right? But if you are striving for something and it's something great, then being balanced makes no fucking sense. <laughs> it literally makes no sense because that shit, again, it does not even happen in the movies. That shit does not happen in Hollywood. You get what I'm saying? Now, you may be thinking to yourself, Brandon, what about enjoying life? You got to live a little, man. You got to enjoy life. All to enjoy life. <laughs> all right, fucking Ferris Bueller. I know you want to fucking party all day, but listen, hear me out. Hear me out. When most people talk about enjoying life in this context, I don't want to work all day. I want to enjoy life. I want to do all this other shit. That's because they don't enjoy work. So they have to escape with all this enjoying life and shit. Right? In this video, I'm going to show you the cheat code to get around this so you can actually work more and enjoy life. But it's not, we're not talking about balance. We're talking about integration. 
and I'll explain it in this video. But people hate, they fucking hate their work. <laughs> hmm. Right? So they got to fucking get high and shit like Scooby Doo all the time. They got to get, they got to fucking do a bunch of recreation outside of work, right? To in, in here in your sleep here so this doesn't count, right? So they spend half their awake hours doing something they hate and they spend the other half fucking partying up, work hard, play hard. What if you didn't have to do that? What I'm talking about, what I'm going to explain in this video is another way. What if it was this? What if you enjoyed this and enjoyed this, right? Then it wouldn't be as much of a sacrifice or it wouldn't feel as, uh, fuck. I'm going to get, I'm going to get this guys. Then it wouldn't feel like a sacrifice to do what you have to do for success, which is you have to probably, you have to skew this more this way. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> or depending on where you at and depending on the size of your goals, it might have to be more like this, right? Depending on where you at and where you want to be, who knows? But if you enjoy it all, then it's fine, right? It's only an arduous task and you only feel compelled to engage in tons of recreational party fun shit because you don't enjoy the work. So your version, when you say enjoy life, you are talking about escapism. You are talking about hedonism. You know what I'm saying? And then they, people, those same people may look at someone like me and they say, oh, he's a workaholic, man. I wouldn't want his life. He's a workaholic. No, no, no. I wouldn't want your life, <laughs> you know, because loving what you do for a living is not some fucking disease, right? What sounds like hell to me because I live like this, right? I enjoy both my work and my life, right? But what sounds like hell to me is if you spend a third of your life doing something you don't enjoy just so you can spend another third of it doing st stuff that you do enjoy. That is actually worse. All you enjoy life, motherfuckers, don't understand that the workaholics, most of us enjoy life more than you because we enjoy the work as well. We don't feel compelled to go party get high, get drunk, go on vacations all the time. There's nothing wrong with those things. But if those are the only ways that you can enjoy life, then you can only enjoy life sparingly. You get little pockets of joy where the workaholics are enjoying life the entire time they are awake. And that's what I want to help you accomplish in this video. I want to break down how you can do that because once you do that, then... You can do what's required for success is to be unbalanced. You can finally be unbalanced and do what's required for you to succeed, but it's not an arduous task because you enjoy it all. Doesn't that sound better than sacrificing fucking eight hours of your day, a third of your life doing some shit you hate in order to spend another third of it finally doing something that you enjoy? Doesn't that sound better? Thing is, that's what's required for you to succeed. You get what I'm saying? <laughs> right? That's what's required for you to succeed. So let's let's break down what that looks like. So what we want. I already fucked this up. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Bear with me. Bear with me. All right. What we want is massive success. That's why we're here. We want a ball out of control. We don't want just a little money. We want mad money. Why do we want mad money? Well, because 
when you have more resources, you can do more for yourself, your family, everyone you love. You know, it's 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 it's, it's incredible to be rich. I've been rich and I've been poor, and I'm telling you, man, being poor is better. I mean, I'm saying being rich is better, significantly better. <laughs> Anyone who tells you otherwise is just trying to mitigate the feelings of inferiority they feel they experience when they see me flexing on their motherfucking ass. So they have to rationalize poverty. <laughs> I'm going to show you how you don't have to do that, right? So it's a two prong, right? To to get massive success, you have to one work. <laughs> more right you have to work more and it's gonna have to be above average right you can't put in average you can't put in average effort and get above average results there's no version of reality where that can happen it has never happened it never will happen unless of course you got some big titties but if you're watching this video (laughs) it stands to reason that you are probably a guy there's about two or three women who watch this um who watch my videos and we're happy to we're happy to see you you know uh <laughs> you might be better off just getting a fucking boob job because <laughs> that'd be the easiest that'd be a way easier way for you to accomplish your goals right <laughs> my girl was just born with some big titties and she ends up, she had to do shit. And she ended up in a penthouse, a Miami penthouse, man. Don't have to cook clean, got motherfucking maids and shit. And like, all she had to do was have some big titties, right? So go get you some big titties. I wanted to be, you know how to do all this shit. All right. <laughs> but if you're a man watching this, you're going to have to work more, right? But see, it's not going to be, you don't, but you have to work more so you can't be balanced. So how do you enjoy life? You have to enjoy work. I'm going to explain how. And just think about it. Imagine, even if you didn't want massive success, what if you just enjoyed your work? Because <laughs> you got to spend time doing it anyway. All of us have to work, every one of us, except for uh, those of us with big titties, like my girlfriend, she ain't got a job, right? But if you ain't got no big titties, you got to work. So you got to enjoy life. I mean, so you got to find a way to enjoy your work. You know what I'm saying? I mean, she will put in some work when she gets back. <laughs> the rent's due <laughs> when she gets back. And I'm coming to collect. <laughs> so now here's the thing. A lot of people say, man, I don't want to work. I don't want to sacrifice my family. I don't want to sacrifice. No, they say, I don't want to sacrifice my health, man. Work more, work so much, and then I get sick and I'm sacrificing my health. No one's asking you to do that shit, dumbass, right? (laughs) So I'm going to lay down some rules and I'm going to show you how to do it. Don't sacrifice don't sacrifice Sorry. What? Oh, sorry. My fault, my fault. Ah! (laughs) Ah! All right, let me start. Let me start this one over. Don't (laughs) sacrifice health. And I'll explain how you can do that. And in fact, I mean, it makes sense, right? Because if you sacrifice your health, you can't fucking work hard. If you all sick, you got the flu or the cancer or some shit. You, how hard can you work <laughs> if you're sitting around dying and shit? Getting sick is whack, man. It's for losers, right? So you, we don't sacrifice health. And then I don't want to sacrifice my family, man. Never be around my kids. I hear this shit all the time. It's like nobody's telling you to do that shit, dumbass, right? And I'm going to show you how to do it, but don't sacrifice. Don't sacrifice. I'm going to lay down these rules and show you how to do it, but don't don't sacrifice family. Don't sacrifice family, right? Well, 
how do how do, well man you may be thinking brandon well if I, how am i going to work more without sacrificing my health and without sacrificing my family ah we're going to sac we are going to make a sacrifice here's the thing life is life is a game of trade-offs right Everything, every time you do something or decide to do something, you're deciding not to do something else. It's always a trade-off, right? If you decide to go to Pizza Hut, then you're, just, if you're saying yes to Pizza Hut, then you're saying no to Domino's, right? It's a trade-off. If you're watching this video, that means you're not watching another video, right? Life is a game of trade-offs. It's always a trade-off, right? In the past, you've been trading off the wrong things. Those of you who want to be extremely successful. So you're going to have to sacrifice something. So always a trade-off. So what are we going to sacrifice? We are, are going to sacrifice bullshit. <laughs> sacrifice bullshit. Oh. So that may be like, hey, man, maybe you don't get to watch as much Netflix as you want. Maybe you... <laughs> maybe you don't get to watch as much motherfucking pornography as you as you like to right maybe you don't get <laughs> maybe you don't get to fucking see every sporting event maybe you don't get to spend all day sunday watching football maybe you don't get to see every movie that comes out right we're going to sacrifice all the bullshit maybe you don't get to play as many video games i'm not casting aspersions on any of these activities i'm saying it's always a trade-off Right. So if you choose to do those things, you're not doing something else. Right. So if you're doing the bullshit, the shit that doesn't help you accomplish your goals, then you're either sacrificing. Then, then when you're doing those things, you're either sacrificing things that can help you build your health, things that can help you work more or spending time with your family. So let's sacrifice the shit that's not important. That's not in service of our goals. Right. And then how do we enjoy work more? Right. We have to find intrinsic motivation. I'll explain how to do that. Yeah. Intrinsic motivation. So it's not just about the money. Money's dope. I'm a big fan of currency. Big fan of currency. In fact, I think about it a lot. I like, I like, I like, to, I like to, I like to, I like to make it. I like to invest it. I like to exchange it for goods and services, right? <laughs> but I don't work hard just for the money. And I'll explain what that means, right? You have to find a, a motivation inside of you. Pause. I'm gonna show you how to do that. All right. <laughs> Now, let's start here on this side, the work more side, right? You may be thinking, all right, I got to sacrifice bullshit, but I can't, sac I got I to gotta work more, but I can't sacrifice my health and my family. Oh, I got to sacrifice bullshit. And you also have to plan everything in your calendar. I might sound like a bro broken record because I say this shit all the time, but it is the key to my success. I am nothing without this. I'll write it in blue. Plan everything in calendar, right? So what, what do I mean, right? We're not sacrificing. We're, we're going to work more. So we're going to put the hours that we're working in our calendar. We're not sacrificing health. So what are we going to do? We're going to put our health shit in our calendar. If you, I've showed my calendar before on here. I'm not going to bring it up now, but you know, I have my fucking bedtime in there. Like every hour is accounted for every day. I know exactly what I'm doing. I have videos on how to, how to do it. So you can go watch one of those for, for a recap or, or maybe you need to, to learn how to do it. So I have videos on planning a day and using calendar. Right. And then you're not sacrificing your family. So your family needs to be in your calendar. Every once in a while, people get weird, man. You shouldn't have to put your family in your calendar. No, no, no. You should put everything that's important to you in your calendar. If it's not in your calendar, if you're not planning it, to me, that means that it's not important to you. The things I care about most are on my calendar. When I'm when you know, when I'm gonna be with my son, right? When I'm gonna be with my nieces and nephews that I help that I'm then I'm, you know, um 
trying to be there for since their father died, right? When I'm going to be with my girlfriend, it's, it's, I put it in my calendar because it's, I prioritize. You see, this is what I'm saying. We're prioritizing things. And once you do that, so you're not set. So, how much time do you want to spend with your family? Oh, I want to spend time with my family. How much? You motherfuckers don't even know. <laughs> you don't even know how much time you want to spend with your family. You just say, I want to spend time with my family. How much, motherfucker? Like, let's be deliberate about this shit, right? I don't care how much it is. You want to spend 40, 50 hours with your family? You can. I mean, you can't, though, right? Because kids got shit to do, right? Kids got school, right? Uh, fucking up until like, you know, a kid, children and teenagers need to sleep like close to 10 hours a night, especially like young kids. And they got fucking, they got to sleep 10 hours a night for young kids. They got school. Then they got fucking homework. They got after school shit and their own friends. Your kids ain't got fucking 40 hours to spend with you. However, you need to find out I want to spend time with my family. Let's be specific about it. Like, and then find out exactly how much time you want to spend with them. Right. And then put it in your calendar like an adult, like really plan it. Right. Yeah, cause what, cause what's the alternative? The alternative is you're just going to fucking leave it to chance. But if you do that, you're going to waste so much time. And you're not going to get as much done. And the truth is if you, bec- if you start to enjoy work, the way I'm going to teach you how you're going to have to put everything else in your calendar Otherwise, you're going to get around to it. And then what's going to suffer? Whatever is not in your calendar, right? So we want to plan all these things in our calendar. I mean, it is critical, right? But then the last part of this is finding intrinsic motivation so you can find joy in this thing. Now, to be clear, before we even get there, if you're spending enough time with your family, whatever time you feel like is appropriate, right? And you're not sacrificing your health, right? In fact, you're prioritizing your health. Some it might be the first time some of you motherfuckers prioritize your health. Put your workouts in your calendar, right? You'll probably be healthier than you ever be. Your fucking relationships will probably end up being better. Being better. Like if your girl's complaining, oh, we don't spend enough time together. Cause she's not in your calendar. She's probably fucking right. She's probably not tripping. She's probably right. <laughs> Motherfucker. Right. So let's 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 get serious about it. All right. You got it all in your calendar, right? Now you don't feel guilty when you're working more, right? So that's that that's all that alone is gonna help you work more because you don't feel guilty and you know that your important things are being prioritized. Your family, your health, and work. That's all there is. Family, work, and health, right? That's that's all there is, right? Everything else is bullshit, right? So, but how do we enjoy work more? We got to have intrinsic motivation. How do we do that? Well, we have to look at work as a way of fulfilling our potential. Right. So it's not just work for money. Work needs to become a means for fulfilling your potential. Because how else do you do it? You don't fulfill your potential by partying. You don't feel, fulfill your potential by being on vacation, do you? You don't fulfill. There's no way. There's like there's no way to fulfill your potential by uh, with recreation. Recreation doesn't fulfill your potential, right? Accomplishment fulfills your potential, right? Being the best what? The best father, right? Being in tip top shape right and making a ton of fucking money right and we want to look at work not just as a way to make money but we want to look at all of this as like no no i'm not just living life i'm not waiting for the fucking clock to strike five so i can fucking party and bullshit or, or engage in some recreation activity no 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 i'm trying to fulfill my potential Right. Because instead of enjoying life with hedonism, the way other people are talking about it. Once you look at life like this, now you you enjoy life by pushing yourself, seeing how much how how, how much you can push yourself each day, seeing how much you can accomplish, striving for excellence at work with your family, with your help, actually trying to be the best you can be. Right. And you don't you can't be the best you can be on vacation. You can't be the best you can be. You know what I'm saying? 
watching the game. You can't be the best you can be at the movies. The only way to fulfill your potential is to be the best father, right? The best husband or whatever you got going on, right? Uh, and, and to fucking make as much money as possible. That's the only way everything else is bullshit, right? And the beauty of it is once you start looking at life and work from that, from that perspective, Right. And again, we're not sacrificing health or family. I know you guys make a big deal about that. We're not doing that. Right. In fact, we're trying to optimize health, family and work and we're making it. But we're working as much as as much as possible because now we sacrificed all the bullshit and whatever the bullshit is to you. Maybe it's video games, maybe it's sitting around high and shit, you know, whatever the fuck it is. Right. Maybe it's going to the bar, getting drunk, going to the things. Right. That's not how you're going to enjoy life anymore. You'll start to enjoy the act of becoming the best version of yourself you can be. And if a, a switch flips, right? And then you'll be like Ty was when he was working super hard. He enjoyed that shit, man. I swear I was there. I could tell when somebody enjoys their work versus when they're just working. He enjoyed it. He talks about balance now because he may have forgot how hard he worked because it didn't feel like work. He enjoyed it. He lived in a fuck. This is a man who lived in the house with his video team, right? Who who lived in a house with his video team and all his employees. They had offices in there. I was in there, man, with all the homies, man. I, I would be, I would show up and ties the man. Like I'm not taking nothing to get some, but he may have, when he talks about this balance sheet, he may have forgotten how hard he worked because it didn't feel like work. Ty loved that shit. And I see that over and over again with the people who who are really pushing themselves, right? They enjoy the work. That is the key. That's actually the key to success. If you don't enjoy the work, then how do you put in above average work ethic? It becomes a super arduous task. And that person doesn't enjoy life. We want to blend it all together so we can work more because working more, working above average work is required for above average results. And the only way to do that and still enjoy life is to learn to enjoy work. And you do that when you start looking at work as a, as a means, as a vehicle to fulfill your potential, as a vehicle to be the best man you can be, to leave it all on the field, right? And you can't do that partying, fucking random people <laughs> and, and going on vacation. There's nothing wrong with those things, but those things fit into this category. The things that have to be sacrificed for you to do this. And to be clear, it's a sacrifice either way. You can choose not to do this and go back to enjoying all the life. But if you're not willing to sacrifice for your goal, then the goal becomes a sacrifice. So never, never believe that you can get away without sacrificing. There is always a sacrifice one way or the other. You have to decide which sacrifice you want to make. And if you do that, and if you choose wisely, then you will actually be unstoppable because it's not difficult to outwork other people once you approach it with this attitude. Because the average person is a lazy asshole. <laughs> and if you can, it's so easy to outwork these motherfuckers and run circles around them once you adopt this mindset. Right. And I have some more videos that will help you on that path. Make sure you check that out right now. <laughs> all right y'all this has been another episode of that victory talk podcast um do we have another super chat or no yes we got some all right what's he talking about man let's run, let's run through quick no it's actually a quick one all right cool oh he just gave five as quick as that. i like that i like that <laughs> i like that you know what i'm saying shout out to you brother all right listen guys again make sure you join the victory unit discord i got a free course in there if you if you ain't got it, i got tons of free courses i'm gonna go live i go live in there a few times a month and tomorrow, Ryan Willis is going live in there for free. Uh, it's a bunch of free uh, resources in there for you. And also, make sure that you subscribe to the newsletter, Big Money Methods. All right, it's free. And it's, you know, methods to help you get big money. Uh, you'll find it very helpful. All right.